Gods and deities in Buddhist art is probably one of the biggest uh, topics, categories. When we talk about gods and deities, we're, we're using English words here where they're often very interchangeable. Uh, sometimes we're more careful in, in English or European languages, but in the Tibetan language, you can use the word god or hla for a mountain god, uh, a meditational deity, uh, a Brahma, Indra, Vishnu, a Hindu god. You can use it for, for all kinds of things. So we, we have a lot of words we use. They can be very interchangeable. Uh, we have to be very flexible with them. Now, when it comes to art and the depiction of gods and deities in Buddhist art, and this somewhat applies to, to Bun as well, the Bun religion, but what we have really is um, a two fundamental, very large fundamental divisions. And, and they are the traditional categories based on function and the visual categories based on appearance. These are very two and very uh, generally distinct things. The traditional categories based on function is far more uh, religious context, religious studies, and the visual categories based on appearance is really the basis for the artists and how they approach the creation of painting and sculpture and murals and textiles. So these two divisions need to be um, understood clearly. So for the categories based on function, we do have a little bit of overlap with some of them because we, we have the, the, the concept of uh, peaceful, semi-peaceful, semi-wrathful, and wrathful, which is very common with the Sarma schools as, as a category of dividing deities. Um, the Nyingma tradition and the Bun religion often don't stress the semi-peaceful, semi-wrathful. Yes, they have that category, but they don't stress it, and they often will only talk about peaceful and wrathful deities. Peaceful and wrathful of the Bardo, peaceful and wrathful of the Guyagarba, etc. Okay, then we have uh, deities according to the four tantric Buddhist activities. Uh, we have peaceful activities, increasing, powerful, and wrathful. And this all comes out of the tantric system. We don't have this concept in Mahayana Buddhism and in, uh, uh, in, the, in the, the earlier Pali Sutra Buddhism. Then we have the traditional categories um, based on, on function. And this is often also how we will see deities depicted in a field of accumulation paintings, um, very colloquially called um, refuge field paintings. Uh, so in this case, not counting, of course, the, the teachers and lineage, um, uh, uh, earlier lineage teachers, we're only talking about gods and deities. So very similar to a refuge field, we'll have the Buddha, uh, the meditational deity. So here it would be um, Kala Chakra or Vajra Yogini, Vajra Kila. Uh, then we have long life deities, wisdom producing deities, deities that are practiced for uh, generating intellect, intelligence, memorization skills, um, uh, the ability to write and to create poetry. Then we have uh, deities that specialize in power. Then we actually have a, have a category of deities that are, are actually called not so. They're called miscellaneous, miscellaneous deities. Uh, then we have protector deities such as Mahakala uh, and Sri Devi. And then we have worldly protectors. And the worldly protectors, of course, the four most important and the earliest ones are the four guardian kings of the directions. Then we have wealth deities. Uh, deities that help in the producing of, of wealth and, um, and food and garments for the benefit of, uh, of spiritual practice uh, and studying and going into retreat. And then last, we have uh, purification. Um, now, of course, the way I've, I've listed these aren't exactly as they might fall in a, in a uh, refuge field painting, but they're pretty close. 
Then what we have is the, the four classes of Buddhist Tantra. And they will include uh, the, the, three, the three moods of uh, peaceful, semi-peaceful, semi-wrathful, and wrathful. They'll also include uh, the, the four tantric activities, etc. But the, the four uh, classes of Tantra are really a, a kind of a more modern convention because earlier on in the end of uh, middle and end of the uh, first millennium, sometimes there were five, sometimes six, sometimes nine um, uh, levels of, of classes of Tantra. But o over time, especially with the Sarma traditions, then uh, four classes ha have really developed. And that is the Kriya Tantra, the Charya Tantra, Yoga Tantra, and then the highest Tantra, Anuttara Yoga. And uh, so these are, are, the, are the main Buddhist classifications. But then in terms of, of uh, gods and worldly gods, we have many, many different uh, uh, levels and categories and types. And then they also merge into uh, demigods, lesser gods, mountain gods, spirits. Um, so it can, be, it can become very onerous just going through all of these. But the, the principal worldly gods after the four guardian kings of the directions, which were taken in as, as Buddhist, uh, the earliest Buddhist uh, protector uh, figures, and they are truly considered as gods within the Hindu cultural uh, pantheon or Indian classical uh, cultural pantheon. But then we have the, uh, the principal worldly gods who are uh, taken again from, from Indian culture. We have Brahma, Indra, Agni, Yama, Raksha, Varuna, Vayudeva, Yaksha, Ishana, also known as Shiva, and uh, Budevi. We also have the, the, the four main ones, the, the Brahma, um, Indra, Vishnu, and Shiva that would appear under the, the feet of uh, the meditational deity, Hevajra. So, so really, these are the, are the main gods and deities, uh, categories of gods and deities um, in Buddhist art according to the traditional category based on function. We will talk about the visual categories based on appearance later. Uh, you can press the like button. I hope you do. Uh, you can subscribe. You can actually visit the Himalayan Art Resources website and you can uh, donate. There's a donate button on the home screen. Or you can join HAR on Patreon and help support the work we do.